y'all and Pastor Scott, we ready? Well, God is good. Are you happy to be in church tonight? Yeah. Amen. Have you had a good day in the Lord? Yes, sir. Amen. Have you did some praying today? Yes, well, God is good, isn't he? I want to talk about, <coughs> tonight it's on the board, I've only got one scripture. Can you believe that tonight? And I tell you what, I don't think that's the right one, Brother Scotty. One thirteen, brother. Second Timothy one thirteen. I do have it on the board. I'd like for everybody to go ahead and get there because that's where we're going to stay, right there. Second Timothy one thirteen. The name of my sermon tonight is Sound Doctrine. And you know, guys, we've been uh, trying for years to have a sound doctrine around here. Amen. And I claim now that we have a sound doctrine. And I'm going to illustrate that tonight with some of these things I have on this table up here <clears throat> as we get into the Word tonight. I've already prayed for the sermon tonight, so we're not going to overstep that and double pray. Amen? We're going to jump into it, and we're going to see what God has for us tonight. 2 Timothy 1.13. It's up here on the screen also tonight. If you're not there, I'd like for you to look up here and see what we got to say. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. You glad to hear that tonight? <clears throat> that word, well, a lot of words actually, but that word, that word sound kind of jumped out to me one morning when I was reading that. And it was like the Lord said, you need to preach on sound doctrine. And me and my little wife one morning was having one of our Bible studies. We're starting to have quite a few more of them. Are you glad? We're glad. We're having quite a few more of them because we want to learn all that we can learn to be able to bring to the church and teach to the people, okay? So it's all about learning. And as I said a while, about, a while ago about growing, if her and I grow together and we grow at home with Bible studies, we're going to be able to produce more here at the church. We're going to be able to bring the Word better and know the Word better. So that's what we want to get into because God has called us to take care of the people of His. Do you believe that? Now, sound, the first thing that comes to me is wholesome and healthy. And what I was about to tell you about me and my wife, me and my wife was having a little Bible study one morning. I said, let me bring this to you. And it hit me as I was doing this about stuff like you see on this table. I'm thinking nutritional, sound doctrine. And it just kind of kept coming to me. And I thought, well, Lord, what are you trying to say? Well, therefore, sound doctrine means the doctrines and teaching of God's Word is wholesome and healthy. That's when it hit me. Wholesome and healthy. And boy, I tell you, people, some of the stuff we eat now is not very wholesome and it's not very healthy. The only wholesome thing is about it is so bad it heats holes in our stomachs. Amen? And I don't know what is healthy about it. <clears throat> so as you see the illustration on the table today, there is some yummy looking stuff up there. And then again, there is some nutritional stuff up there. Now, is everyone in the church tonight wise enough to figure out which one is which? I see some Pepsi and I see some water. Yummy. I see some donuts. Boy, look at this big fat thing, would you? Got chocolate all over it. See that? Man, look. Look. Got some chocolate chip cookies. Don't ask him. He's been eating all day. He's not even hungry. <laughs> look, guys. Boy, now who don't like these? Who don't like these? She has one of these with coffee? No, I have six of the little ones. With your coffee? Okay, let's jump to something else. Let's jump to Whoppers. I say, Whopper! Hey, Amen? Who likes Whoppers? They're good. Right? They're good. Okay. Who likes M&M's? Well, let me ask this. Who doesn't like chocolate chip cookies? Never mind. I shouldn't have asked that. <laughs> Are y'all crazy? <laughs> well, okay. So you maybe don't eat much sweets anymore. And believe me, I've slacked off too because I know that they're not good for us. Am I saying that we cannot have a snack? I don't believe God intends that we can't have any snack. 
I believe that God says we need to control our things. I believe that's what God is trying to say. And you know, I can't help but think, I can't help but think of a TV when I say that. God didn't say, I mean, I don't believe that it's a sin to watch TV. I believe it's a sin if we don't control what we watch on TV. I believe we need to be uh, coherent of what we're seeing on TV. If you see something as bad, if you see something as ugly, if you see them cuss words start to get beeped out, you better get the channel in it. Amen? I would say watch the world news, but that's worse than any soap opera. <clears throat> the world news anymore is depressing, isn't it? <clears throat> The wholesome and healthy teachings of God's Word in contrast to the diseased teaching of false teachers. Now, I want to speak about false teachers for a few minutes. You know there's a lot of them out there. There's a lot of false teachers out in this world that is teaching doctrine, but it's not sound. They're teaching man's doctrine or even Satan's doctrine sometime. But if we teach... <clears throat> The doctrine of God, we're going to be on the right side of God. Now, I believe we have some preachers out there that's preaching only sweet things. He's preaching only sweet things. And all he talks about is how are we going to be blessed. Amen? The churches are filling up. Sister Sue and I went to a church one time. That guy preached like that. We could feel imaginary sugar. <laughs> it felt like it was dripping off the ceiling, didn't it? That's one of the worst I've ever been into. You could almost see sugar falling off the tile. This guy was practically saying it was okay to do anything. You could tell. There was quite a few. Well, I'm going to tell you why we didn't walk out, Sister Bob. I'm going to tell you exactly why we didn't walk out. Because this didn't happen until close to the end. I mean, he was, you could tell he wasn't right. But he got worse and worse and worse. We went there with a friend that warned us to go there. We thought, well, this is really going to hurt her if we get up and walk out. Yeah. So we knew we just about had it made. But boy, when we got out of there, we let her know about it. <laughs> and we said, we will not go back to that place ever again. <clears throat> and there again, I think that was meant to be because we was able to show her and tell her you could tell she was like yeah so i think that's one reason we had to stay through the service so we could say i didn't want her to well you got to think about this too now you left too early he wasn't done yet i didn't want to hear any more of that so we put up with it just to do it and i'm glad we did because we knew and we was able to minister to her and we was able to stop her from going there but what i'm saying was that's false teaching that's false teaching now, you know what? I told you this morning in church, sin is sin. False teaching is no worse than me getting up here, not living the life of Christ and teaching. What's the difference? It's a sin, isn't it? So, you know, I get to thinking about that sometimes. How can I knock that, brother, when I'm not doing what I need to be doing either? So, as we have decided as of today, everything is going to be right from this moment forward. Amen? And it's wonderful to know that we can come into a clean house of God. I believe <clears throat> on occasion, we all sometimes feel unsure of our direction in life and in the choices that we are making. Sometimes we have to fight choices, do we not? Yes. Yep. Have you ever heard somebody say, decisions, decisions, yep. decisions? I want you to look at that table and say, decisions, say it. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Well, I didn't want to put poison on the table, sister. <laughs> Dr. Pepper. I'm with her. I'm Dr. I guess I should have put that up here because that's prune juice. That's good for you, right? Uh, I use this because you know what? To me, pop is pop. It's all pop, okay? No matter how you look at it. I knew I was going to get corrected. What's it called? Soda? I thought they come in a box. I thought soda come in a box. You know what I call it? Pepsi. That's what I call it. But pop is pop. It's canned sugar. Am I right? Okay. Now I'm using this for an illustration because which one is actually better? That Pepsi or that water? 
Okay, now which one is better here? That plate or this bowl right here? Both. Really, you think so? They're both, <laughs> they're both fattening. Yeah. Now I want you to look though. I want you to look. I didn't I didn't put butter in there. Now it's a old dry roll. I've eaten more than eggs than Lindy Cheese. It's hard too. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Lindy Cheese. Okay. You know, I went to a restaurant one time, they'd do this. <laughs> and they would throw you a roll. And I'm telling you, when they throwed you a roll, you better be ready to catch it. Both of you guys struck out. I better get back up here. If they can't catch a roll, I'm sure not going to throw a can of that pop. <laughs> Sister Emily's going, no. <laughs> we must take a pause and reset our thinking. I believe we've all done that. What do you think? I think we've all taken a pause. I think we've clicked into our new mind. We've reset our mind on the positive things of pleasing God. Now, I want you to listen to 2 Timothy 1.13 again. Now, look real carefully to what that says. It's saying, hold on to the pattern of right living you learned from me. That's what that is saying, okay? And remember to live in the faith and love that you have in Christ Jesus. Timothy simply was telling everyone, <clears throat> just like Pastor Steve needs to tell you tonight, he told everyone to listen to what he has been teaching them. Okay? If we listen to sound doctrine of the church, this is not only the sermons, am I right? This also includes Sunday school and OBS. This means open Bible study. This means Sunday school. This means church sermons. Why do I say that? How do we get sound doctrine out of there? Because if I am preaching sound doctrine and nothing to go with that, but all good. See, I can't, Sister Barbara, I can't preach sound doctrine. I can't preach sound doctrine and not live like God wants me to live. Am I saying this is a sin? That's not what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. Quit indulging yourself in things of the world. Okay? We know without a shadow of a doubt that this right here is much, much better. Every time I pick one of these up, I think of how Jesus broke the bread. Sister Debbie. But if you overdo it. Huh? Brother Steve. Are you ready? But see, are you really ready for God's word? If you are, you would catch. If you are, you would catch. Okay. They're getting better. No cans of pop. No cans of pop. Do you catch my point? Do you catch my point? If you would listen and start adhering the thing of God's word to your life, you will get rid of the junk. The stuff will be out of your life. Do you agree to that tonight? Oh, yeah. Timothy, see, was simply trying to tell the... Thank you, baby. You know, guys, myself and Pastor Scotty, we have to hold fast to the sound doctrine. And I'm going to go ahead and say that for Sister Henry. I'm going to go ahead and say that for Sister Vi. Because they're teaching in the church if we teach in God's house we've got to have that sound doctrine as I said a minute ago I didn't say you're gonna die and go to hell tonight if you have a Pepsi and a chocolate chip cookie before you go to bed that's good because most people did back there for <laughs> <laughs> you're not supposed to tell all sister Sue you're not supposed to tell all sister Sue but it's the truth it's the truth same way with the TV thing I told you about. Same thing with the radio. You know what? You know what channels are good, and you know what channels are bad on the radio. Don't they even have bad stations on the radio? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like. Okay. Well, we know. Amen. Sister Vi, we got to stay in tune. Are you in tune tonight? Are you in tune with what God has for you? Also, for Sister Sue, 
and really all teachers. We have got to have that sound doctrine. Now we've talked about the word sound. Let's talk about the word doctrine. A system of religious beliefs which followers and believers pass on to others. Are you doing that? Are you a believer? Are you a follower? Okay, what are you doing with the words that you hear at church? Are you taking them home, throwing them in the closet, and slamming the door? You're doing something with it. If you are, you have doctrine figured out. Paul impressed upon young Timothy the importance of sound doctrine and teachers and teachings. It reminds me of here. I have to be like Paul. I have to pursue. I have to insist on good teaching. Not only my preaching, but the teaching that goes. I'm talking all the way down through Sister Vi with the little kids back here. Well, you know what? If I didn't trust Sister Vi and she didn't know what she knew, you think I'd let her be back here with them kids? I don't care if they're 3, 4, 8, or 10, or 12. I don't care. Here's what I'm trying to say. If I knew that she wasn't teaching the right words back there, she wouldn't be back there. Amen? If I knew Sister Henry wasn't bringing a Sunday school lesson that was of God, guess what? Sister Henry wouldn't be up here. Sister, uh, sister, <laughs> assistant, I was trying to get it out, assistant pastor Scotty. If he wasn't doing and teaching the things that he was supposed to be doing, he wouldn't be up here. Do I need all of you's help? Yes. Yes, I do. But let me say it like this. I want your good help. I want your sound doctrine help. I don't want your help that has sweets in it, okay? I want your wholesome health. That's the only way we're going to get this church built up. Right. We don't want to hear we're going to close the doors no more. We won't hear that no more because we're on the sound doctrine of God. And we have the perfect stuff here to drink. Amen. We have water. See how clean and how pure that is. Isn't that nice? Does everybody love water? Yep. I sure hope we do because we got to have it, don't we? The Holy, the Holy Spirit. Living water. How about the living waters? Amen. Isn't that wonderful? God is good. Yep. What is your choice today, my friends? Decisions, decisions, decisions. Do you want wholesome and healthy teachings? Some of you in here probably, I'm going to guess at this, will only eat healthy foods. <laughs> Now, you just hurt Brother Steve's feelings. <laughs> Brother Steve don't even know what a french fry tastes like anymore. Horse. Huh? Horse feathers. Horse feathers. <laughs> I think that means, okay, he don't believe that, okay? <laughs> but true enough, guys, we may splurge, and we may have a snack, and we may have a sweet, and we might have a can of pop every once in a while, but you know what? That has nothing to do with the sound doctrine that we live for for God. Right. Amen. So I want us to not be confused tonight of what I'm trying to say. But believe me, Christian atmosphere, Christian living is your wholesome, healthy way to go. You know, you got these big old gyms. Don't we have one? That probably got flooded out. But I think we still got one over here, I think. Is that one working again? Yeah, that's, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of work on your body. Is that going to get them to heaven? Do you think some of them might think they can... Yeah, work their, work their way through? Have a workout? Or you think boxers think they can box their way into heaven? Do you think runners think they can run their way into heaven? They might be some that thinks that, but they're not thinking correctly is all I can tell you. But the real workout for God is in His Word. Do you believe that? I'm not saying, guys, that we can't have a snack. What I'm saying is, spiritually, we've got to have sound doctrine to live for God. Literally, yes. Spiritually, no. You cannot snack and you cannot cheat in your spiritual life. You know, I kind of gave an illustration of that a minute ago. If we claim to be Christians and we claim to be the people that we need to be for God, we need to stay cleansed. Okay? 
we can't here's a good illustration look guys now I'm living for God okay and I'm bringing the word of God to the church but then again I got a little of both is that God's ways we have to do this we have to be we have to be suited up and we have to be ready that's right we have to be equal and we have to be equal in God's words okay now I don't want to hold you much longer tonight I want to make sure you got the point of sound doctrine and how good sound doctrine is going to work in our lives and this one scripture to me is very powerful hold fast the form of sound words I brought a sermon here not too long ago well I don't know one day from a year but it's been a while back sound mind remember that yeah are you thankful tonight that you have a sound mind yes. well <laughs> praise the lord is right see some people even christians start losing their mind am i right yep. the old devil starts well we do go through that too the memory thing but some of us our mind starts going away i know my wife has always said lord please don't ever take my mind and I hope we can all say that. Okay. I got a question for you. If we are living for God, now I don't know if you've ever thought about this before, but it's going to give you something to think about. If we are truly a saint of God, truly a believer of God, and we truly have sound doctrine in our life, in other words, in other words, we are Christians, okay? We are sound in God's word. What about if our mind does start going? What about if our mind starts dissipating? What do you think is going to happen to your spiritual life? God has you. Because, see, you went into that as a Christian, have you ever thought about that? No, I never thought about that. I want you to think about that. Now, who believes this, Sister Emily? Who believes this? You could wake up tomorrow and have lost some of your mind. Okay, we all believe that? Do you want to take that chance? Do you want that sound doctrine? If you wake up tomorrow... And you've lost your mind. I mean, you know, things happen like that. You know, aneurysms, I don't know, whatever can happen. You could wake up, stroke, you say stroke? Yeah. Wake up tomorrow and your mind's gone. But if you was that solid Christian, you're going to be okay. I would hate to have a stroke and lose my mind and knowing I was living. I sure have. I sure have missed my little baby. If you guys, she's so sweet. I don't want to have a stroke. I don't want to wake up tomorrow and lose half my mind. Oh, you caught that, did you? When I wake up tomorrow and I have lost my mind, I want to know that I'm safe. I'm going to throw that donut at you. The one that's got that chocolate all over it, too. I'm glad you're back. Brother Albert said, I've been eating all day. Them donuts don't even look good, do they, brother? Let me leave you with this tonight. Am I saying we can't have a snack here or there or sometimes? I'm not saying that, guys. I want you to listen carefully. Literally, yes, we can have a snack every once in a while. Now, I do believe sometimes we overindulge. And I think we also know that, don't we? Uh-oh. Some of you said, yeah. If you know that, what would you just do? But we don't do that anymore, do we? We know where to stop. We know where to cut it. Amen? Okay. Spiritually, no. We cannot snack. We cannot cheat. We cannot live half-hearted for God. You want a Twinkie? Then go get you a Twinkie, okay? But don't go get you 12 of them and sit there and have them in one feast, okay? There, we know, we know, don't we? Yep. 
then you go walk it off. Or then you go work it out. Does anybody ever eat a half box of Twinkies and then go to bed? Now, would that be I very... Three muffins before my sleep. <laughs> yeah, me too. And got sick and... She said she ate three muffins. I know, Barbara. I know what you're talking about. And Dr. Pepper. And I was sick the next... I'd be sick, too, if I drank Dr. Pepper. I know everything. Huh? <laughs> you know you know what I'm saying, though. I have brought it down. You know what I'm saying, though? Yep. Yeah. And we've done that. We've done that before to ourselves. And we know. We know that it's not supposed to. But now we know the difference between half-hearted and whole-hearted. Now we know the difference between wholesome and nutrition, and now we know the difference between junk. Amen? God doesn't yeah. want junk in our life. That doesn't only just mean this kind of junk. It also means spiritual junk. You know, guys, we got to get our, we, we have ourselves where we need to be now. You're going to see changes. You're going to see different things taking place. And I know that without a shadow of a doubt that each and every one of you knows the right way. Each and every one of you knows the sound doctrine, okay? So what are we going to do? We're going to live it. We're going to live it. We're going to go forward. And we're going we're gonna to take that sound doctrine. And we're going to thank God every day for our sound mind. Amen. Even though some of you say, I don't have one of them. But we got to pray every day that God would keep our sound minds. Amen. Amen. I want to cut it off right there. Thank you. Amen. God's good.